Kit review time, something a little bit different. Today we've got Mini Arts 135th scale German tram car. Now we like to do something a little bit different every now and again, and this is definitely it, okay? And it's nice to see how the hobby is really diverse and, uh, and moving into different areas as well. So actually what we've got here, is the German tram car. Okay, something a little bit different. Now, I ha personally haven't seen this before at all. Okay, this is Rons, who was on the live show with us, who's uh, lent us this one for a review. But generally, working around the box, you see, we haven't got too much stuff on the box. Um, it's 2014, it's a brand new kit. Now, apparently they are bringing out figures as well to go inside this one. Uh, I'm led to believe it was around about 40 pounds as well, okay? So your kit number is 38003, all right? Now, the first thing you notice is that it is actually really heavy, okay? And I haven't been inside this yet, all right? And then straight away we've got a manual, but looking at that, we've got a box full of plastic. Okay, and I don't know what the part count on this is, but it seems to be very high. So, uh, in the little booklet, as we can see, we've got some very nice artwork on here showing the sort of all the different parts for the the paintwork. Uh, I've got the paintwork callouts, which is quite nice. So we're in Vallejo, Testers, Tamiya, Humbrol, uh, Rebel, Mister Color, uh, uh, Life Color and then obviously just the normal colors they are and everything else like that, and your decal placement as you're working all the way through. Okay, so looking through here, as we can see, you've got multiple sprues of the same, so it looks like we've got two A's, two B's. I'm wondering if it's because it technically it looks the same both directions, that's what it is, like two halves going together. Okay, so as I said, I haven't looked at these, I know nothing about them whatsoever, so we're just gonna skim through the instructions just to have a, a look-see, okay? So basically, working our way through, you're working on the floor, it looks like, and then the suspension for the tram. Um, we've got some of the beam work going through for the actual chassis and everything else. And I'm gathering I'm right. I hate being right. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but it looks like, because it's saying times two to everything that it is, you're going to build one end and then the other at the same time, and then you're going to literally push them together, which would be quite a clever thing, which you do. So there we go. So that's how that's going to work, and that explains why you've got two sprues of everything. Okay, then you're working on the internals. You've got internal seating, um, and then obviously the bench work, the floor work all going in. Then we've got the actual the doorways, uh, the windows and the halves going on, the doors themselves, um, obviously into the, the driver's cab door, things like that, the actual driver's area itself. Okay, and it does look very nicely detailed going in. And also the thing is, uh, Ron's not starting this one yet for a very good reason, is that apparently they are bringing out passengers uh, and a driver to go with this kit as well. And I believe they're probably gonna do other versions of it. Let's say something a little bit different. Glasswork going in again. Um, and the lighting system on the front, got some very nice details here, right way down to the door hinges and things like that. That's going on, the cab work going on the front. So you are literally building the train itself, or the tram, I should say. Okay, the roof work's starting to go on now, so we've got some nice decals as well uh, for advertising, I should think, and things like that. That's going on there. Again, more windows, lots of glass work on this one. Okay, and then going through and then in, and that's all being fitted to the top. Actually, it looks very nice, very straightforward build. Okay, then it gets complicated. So now we've got the actual, the running gear itself, all right? So we've actually got uh, the wheels, um, the drives, the suspension, all of these areas going down onto here. And it looks like obviously you've got the motors as well being electric, those being fitted on. Again, to these bogies as well, they're actually fitting in very nicely. Lots of detail down here. Okay, you can really, looks like it's very nicely done if it transfers to the parts, which it should do, okay. Very good, going through all the way, nice little touches. Um, the little door braces themselves, beautifully done. The overhead, the power cable, or the whatever it is, the trapeze thing that goes up to the power. See, I really do know nothing about these. Okay, and then going through, then we've got the little, um, the signs, which are roller ones on these, brilliant. Okay, and then falling through. Again, very nice details, level of detail of all the hosing and the various handle grab handles and everything for the outside of it, the way they're a separate part, not just molded in quite crudely. Okay, so that would be your actual, the tram done. Okay, then you're working onto the, the actual uh, little bit of track you actually get with it and the overhead wiring system. Again, very nicely done. I'm assuming this is gonna be your threads going through, making up your, your cabling and things like that. And then you're popping it onto the base with the overhead, the power lines running through and everything else like that. That does look really, really nice. 
<coughs> and then here, I'm assuming because this has got a cutout thing, this is what you're going to stick for the actual areas here, which is something a little bit different. So it's not an actual a decal. So I'll be a little bit careful with it wrong because it literally has got nothing on the back. So you're putting down paper as it would be, I suppose. You know, you don't really need a decal. They would be thick paper put on there and stuck on there. So we've got some very nice oldie woldy advertising uh, bits and pieces down there, all the way down a Coke look. All right, very nicely done. It does look exquisite. Right, okay, so oh, what we have, which I wasn't expecting, is one giant bag just like this. Yep, sorry, wrong. Okay, so if we start here, this is your track area, and um, we do get decals as well. So I'll pop them, yeah, we can have a quick look at those just as we're here. So you've actually got the, the decals themselves looking pretty good. They look to be basically like a satin type finish nicely done they're pretty close there's not a lot of carrier film on those either pretty good okay so you've got your base so you've got various lumps on the top i don't know what they are um, i don't know if they should be there it's like braille or something but you have got balls on the top of the cobbles as they work themselves around i do like the cobble way very nicely done as you can see it here i presume it's because there's no there's no actual um, ejector pin to this, I'm wondering if it's like a type of back form or something onto this, or it's just like heat pressed on. Because as I say, it doesn't look like it's injected. It looks like it's sort of melted on, and perhaps these balls are something to do with the release, but you can easily sort of swipe them off and away you go. But generally the cobbles all look very nice. They're very, you know, ununiform and everything else. Some are smooth, some aren't, everything else. And the track itself, which I'm definitely sure now, because you've got these balls all over it, which I assume shouldn't be there because they're even on the rails. So a little bit different. I must admit, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. So down here in the parts, as I said, we are going to get two of everything. So I'll try and keep it in okay so just generally looking at it first glance at all the plastic is very nice indeed um, I can't see any problems with that it's very sharp there's no release film there's not a lot of, ca of um, flash on it either in fact there's hardly any flash whatsoever the ejector pins all very very shallow very nicely done uh, working our way through so looking at some more of the closer parts you know these handles and everything else they are beautifully molded how well the camera can actually pick some of these up but they are very nicely done all of these I must admit that's uh, quite something and even like these running boards things like that again but it's this fine detail work is extremely crisp very very nice okay so part two is part two Okay, again, loads of sprues, but obviously it's a sprues of two halves. Okay, so you've actually got the front, you can see the lighting system and everything down here. That's really nice on all of that. That does look very, very good. Uh, the doors themselves, the planking work, very crisp and sharp. Again, these springs. Having never built a mini art, I must admit, I am impressed because it is beautifully clean, very, very sharp molding on all of this. Uh, right the way down to, uh, well, camera can grab them. We've actually got the uh, riveting and the metal plating around the door and everything else like that. They are very sharp, to the point of you can actually feel they're sharp as well. Okay, working our way right the way through. So again, no flash, no ejector pin marks anywhere that you'd worry about. The ejector pin marks are very, very shallow as well. There's no sign of stress or anything else getting them out of the mold whatsoever. Okay, so some of this little running gear and everything else like that, very nicely done. The bolting system, it looks what it is, got a nice texture to the plastic as well. So it's not just like one type of texture all the way through. This is looks like it's been, uh, you know, powder coated type of thing. Although I don't think it was back then, who knows? When did powder coating come along? Um, but generally, yeah, looking at it, I can't see any fault with any of this. It looks gorgeous. Very, very nice kit. And it's one of those subjects you would never ever think, oh, I know, I'm going to go and build a tram. It's one of those kits that, you know, you would see somewhere, obviously Ron saw it at the show at Telford, and thought, oh yeah, that looks good. 
um, and reviewing it, I think it's absolutely stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's just put it up. Okay, so into this one. We've got multiples and multiples and multiples in here, so I'm not sure what's what. Um, so what we do, we know that's a duplicate. So down in here, we've got the actual the drive. So we've got the actual um, the drive system itself, working way through the motor, the various parts. Uh, a lot of this crispness. I tell you what, what really stands out for me to this is the crispness of all this moulding. There's no flash anywhere at all, and yet these are very fine parts. There's no sign of stress either, which is amazing. Um, obviously, the ejector pins are all around them, as you can imagine, you know, as you'd have to do, literally everywhere, but certainly you don't get anything like you get on other manufacturers, shall we say. Very, very clean, very, very crisp. And you've got this, um, this is the one I noticed that goes underneath. It looks like it's a plow system, stop you falling under the wheels. Again, very nicely done, all of that. Brilliant, I'm impressed, <laughs> literally very impressed. Okay, so we've got the little wheels there. This is why you're gonna get four of these, I presume, for all the wheels on this. How many wheels does this thing have? Must have more than four, surely. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, very good. But again, these small parts, as you can see, are absolutely exquisite. Loads of detail, loads of little bits coming off of them. No flash whatsoever, no stress marks, no miss molds, nothing. Absolutely beautifully done. So we're assuming they are all the same, which they are. <coughs> so then down here, right, okay, so this is this, um, the actual for the power line, uh, the, um, the the little thing going up to that one. And again, beautifully molded right the way down to the little sphere on the top look, and then coming down. We have got a tiny sink mark, and this is where I'm really having to be picky on this, but there's a tiny sink mark in there, and that's the first one I've seen on this entire kit. So that just shows the quality uh, of this. It's really, really nice. So we've got two of those. Okay, so two of these as well. <coughs> I'll try and get this all back in the box later. All right, so we've got the actual floor system with this wooden paneling on the floor. That's really nice, very nicely detailed. As you can see right the way over, it looks a little bit shiny, but I think that's just a tiny little bit of release agent arch on the plastic, which is the first bit we've seen. Texture, obviously, on the roof, very nicely done. You've even got wood grain in the roof. That's how good this is. And I thought that was just part of the kit. Actually, I think it's supposed to be there, or if it's not, it's a very good job. But it does look like wood grain actually on this top, which is very, very nice. Just seeing if it's on the floor. Floor looks a little bit more generic, but certainly on there, it really does look the part. Very clever. Last up, the clear parts. We imagine these will be fine because literally they're on the floor, uh, because they're all flat. There should be just multiples of. So as you can see, we've got no distortion, even through my very dirty cutting mat. Let's get a new one. Note to self, new cutting mat for reviews. All right. But again, nothing wrong with that at all. A little bit of hazing, perhaps around the edges. But again, now I'm being picky. Um, and because it's a tram, you wouldn't want crystal clear glazing. You would want it to have a little bit of character. You know, nose prints, hand prints on it. Okay, again, very nice. All of those beautifully done. As I say, if you can see through it, then you know it's good. Okay, there's no distortion whatsoever. So there we go. There we have it. The 135th Mini Art German tram car or tram. I must admit, um, having uh, first seen it, you think really, and uh, not my gap bag at all. Having seen the kit, that definitely something I would think, yeah, I could do one of those. I'd like to do one. It's something a little bit different, a little bit wayward, something where you can play with weathering um, to give it a more of a street look rather than battlefield or something else like that, or showroom as you do with a car. This is, would be just general weathering that anything would get, which would be something a little bit nice to do. But there we go. Apparently they are releasing a bit of a series with it. You can buy uh, or get hold of more track for this as well. So if you wanted to do more of a street scene, a diorama, be a large scale diorama at this scale, but hey, uh, but it'd be worth it. But as I said, the figures are coming out for this apparently later in the year. Not sure exactly when, but they are due out later on in the year. So when those come out, obviously you 
pomp them in there. But looking at it, you might be able to put them in afterwards anyway. But anyway, something a little bit different. So there we go, the 135th Mini Yacht tram car.